Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm gonna be taking you on a journey around the property, the studio, outside, greenhouse, and I'm also going to be releasing a new version of our moss pole. This is, see if I can do it one-handed, you can, uh, a bayonet moss pole. So it doesn't require a massive twist, it just locks into place with a small twist. So you save all your roots if you wanna split up your plants. There's a frog here. This guy has been living here for ages. He's just been chilling out, loving the plants, probably eating some insects, you know. All right, let's start the episode. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be a more of an organic episode where I haven't really planned anything. I'm gonna take you around, show you some stuff you haven't seen, and we can have some fun. So let's get you off that tripod. And I'm not gonna start with this part of the studio. We're actually gonna move over to the all the gear set so this is the set of all the gear, uh, which I've been working on a lot lately, actually. But over here, I have a review that I'm working on at the moment. There's actually a lot going on here. We've got two Monsteras, essentially, uh, with Glorium grow lights. They're 40 watt grow lights that are made for indoor plants. They actually put out a really good par. Been quite surprised by them. And they are on top of, you might recognize these buckets. This is the hooch bucket, and this is an upcoming 3D printable design that I've made for them, which makes them into a self-watering planter. These buckets are just so versatile. I don't know how these bloggers do this. It's really hard to hold a large camera. <laughs> I much prefer it on a tripod. But anyway, let's head out of the studio and it has been extremely wet here. I'm in gumboots <laughs> and I was actually out filming in the yard the other day for all the gear and I reversed the four wheel drive in here just to get like a nice shot and I have absolutely destroyed my grass. It's just the ground is I've never seen anything like it. Luckily for me, it doesn't affect my hydroponic systems too much because most of them are in the greenhouse and the ones that aren't are mostly cocoa. So the water just drains through and the cocoa has a high CEC, which means that it holds on to nutrients even if the water runs through it and the excess just run off. So I'll show you this. Here I have hydroponic grapes. These are actually Pinot Noir and I just planted these into a mixture of cocoa and scoria. This is an example of the outside systems having water just run straight through them. It really doesn't affect them, um, although the moisture and humidity at the moment is uh, yeah, we've got some mold issues here. It's about the time of the season where these will die back and I'll end up cutting these right back. So um, these will come down to, they started off just as a stem and I've just been watering them. Um, I've put a hole in the back of the pot, you can see there, which keeps a water level at the bottom or a nutrient level. And I've just been watering can into them and they've grown right up like this. They will not fruit this year, but I'd say they were gonna wait until next year and I'll cut these right back down, almost back down to the stem and they'll have better roots for the next season. So let's take you into the greenhouse and show you what's going on. All right, lots happening. As you can see, I've got lots of tomatoes in the hooch buckets. Wicking, wicking. This is actually a test of cocoa from a supplier that we found for the Hydroland. And this cocoa is doing exceptionally well. Um, you can see that the tomatoes are just loving it. And this is all running on the diamond white. I've switched them over just to see how they respond. And I mean, have a look at these plants. They are just thriving. So this isn't wicking. This is the Dutch bucket setup on a round pipe. We will get to these videos. I'm just showing you what's going on in the greenhouse at the moment. Over here, this is a rosy pack choy doing really well. This coloration is actually meant to be there, although I do think it's meant to be a slightly darker 
more like this purple Chinese cabbage. I think I need to adjust this nutrient solution to be completely honest. Cleared this section out the other day. It was full of lettuce that had bolted and I've been slowly way making my way through the spring onion you see here. The greenhouse is looking fantastic, especially for coming into winter. These plants are gonna slow right down. They won't stop because, you know, Queensland, but they will slow down and I'll get some produce over winter, but it won't be anything compared to what I've been having over summer. So I'm gonna take you out of the greenhouse now. Um, we're gonna have a look at some of the plants around the property. This is the Lazy Man self-watering garden and I am super impressed with this method. This has been loaded with fruit all summer. I did have a fruit fly issue, as you can see. Some of the fruit has sustained bites and I've just let fall to the ground. I really should clean it up, but you know, whatever. Hands off, I haven't touched this. The tree has been absolutely thriving. Because we've had so much rain, there is a little bit of nutrient deficiency, um, but I just need to charge that nutrient from above. Because there's been so much rain, it stops the float valves from engaging, as you can see. If it goes long enough, you just have to uh, siphon this out and then recharge it with nutrient manually, which I haven't done. <laughs> I have had a bunch of volunteer pumpkins. There's my garbage, man. You'll be hearing that for the next few minutes. The volunteer pumpkins have been, well, they've not just been popping up. I've actually been strategically planting them around the property. Same with the turmeric in the back there and the turmeric in the front here. Here he comes. And we'll head over to the other outdoor systems. I'm actually just gonna wait for him to do his thing. Hey, Floki, come here. What's going on? All right, looks like he's gone now. Okay, so this is looking very familiar. It's the same system as last time, except when I finished that video, I reset all of the bags with the new bagging method and I just put a few of the rhizomes of the turmeric and the ginger straight back in and you can see, <laughs> like this is a perfectly replicable result. It's just done so well. The old bags, uh, there was one bag at the end that I didn't plant out and you can see that here and it's just bursting. Like you can see, it's just bursting out of, um, the system, like have a look at that. The bag is just broken open with the amount of turmeric. And we're having the same like all over the system. There's some mixed bags of like ginger and turmeric, but it's getting to winter. So this stuff, you can see it's gonna start dying back very soon. So that's just a fantastic system. I really can't fault it. Over here, we have the float box hydroponic system. Some pumpkins that I just dropped in the system. Here is some sugar cane. It's looking a bit nitrogen deficient and that's not good because it's basically all nitrogen for these plants. I just need to probably water into the top of this system. Same again, just so much rain but it's not stopping the productivity of the system. It's just causing a few nutrient problems, a few deficiencies, which I could actually fix if I was bothered. Now, will you have a look at this dragon fruit system? I mean, how am I meant to eat all of this dragon fruit? And I know I will, and this isn't even all of it. I've been harvesting this non-stop and it just keeps producing like we've still got flowers that are forming fruits i mean this flower hasn't even come out yet more flowers you know like it just keeps going and it is delicious fruit you can see i do have uh some pest infestation problems, but it's all on the fruit, it's not on the plant. They're just massive. I'm just, I'm blown away. Um, the differences in fruit sizes are the differences in variety. So I will highlight that again. Make sure you go for a variety that produces an incredible fruit that you know produces an incredible fruit because you'll just end up with, you know, subpar fruit if you're not 100%. This pearl variety, is incredible. It creates this, this brilliant white flesh. I've got to say, fantastic result. And I'm gonna continue reaping that reward 
for as long as I'm here. Can't recommend this technique enough. I barely ever water them with nutrient, probably once every three weeks. They just thrive off neglect. And I'm really good at that. Here we have coffee plants, Arabica coffee plants. And uh, they weren't doing very well at the start and now they are. So I don't know. They like this rain gutter system. I'm not sure how good the harvest will be because uh, if you know anything about coffee plants, they tend to need to have altitude to, you know, produce, but we'll see. I, I don't have, I've got a little bit of altitude, not much. Pineapples are going bonkers as usual. No fruits yet. Um, I actually think I'm going to need to make them fruit. There's a chemical, it's like ether or something that it's quite expensive though. I think someone mentioned throwing like there was some kind of fruit it's, oh an apple i think it is you throw an apple into them and the apple creates the ether as it rots so i might try that as well these are japanese taro plants they look like elephant ears but they're not they grow incredibly fast i'm transplanted these over from in front of the studio uh, about probably like a month and a half ago they've taken so well to the lazy man's technique i'm halfway through like making this garden into something but as you can see the rain has halted the float valve there's obviously enough nutrients in this for these plants to be thriving though. We've got like a heap of baby plants coming off this. They kind of act a bit like an alocasia and they throw plants similar, well, I guess similar to a banana as well. It's kind of like just popping off so you can just collect them. The leaves are really good to eat um, as well as when I split these, the roots. The roots are incredible and I've been told if you saute them in butter, they're just next level. Yet to do that, I actually gave some of my plants away so I didn't harvest the roots, but I'm very excited to harvest this big fella over here. I redid this whole area. Well, when I did these two lazy mans, I reset up the terracotta grow spike hydroponic system. At the front, you can see the oregano is just, you know, acting like a weed. I've got some chili here. So this is, I think it's a bird's eye chili. Um, and it's just been thrown in to this pot very like, just with a bunch of old cocoa. Um, and I was just seeing if it just took off and well, it has. Over here, the same again, these are chilies and they've just gone from strength to strength. Um, they're just in, you know, smaller terracotta pots. Same again, grow spike underneath. Rosemary, can't kill it. Uh, society garlic and I've just been coming along taking some sprigs over here we have <laughs> okay uh, you've probably never seen this companion planting before but this is uh, potatoes and ginger now I wasn't expecting to get potatoes pop up but I kind of was at the same time I didn't know how they work together, but it turns out that they work just fine. I threw some ginger into the top of some of the potato cocoa, and I was like, you know, whichever one wins can come out on top. But it turns out that they both win. So <laughs> when I harvest this, this is going to be quite, I guess, an interesting bag to open up. It'll be a bag full of surprises. Anyway, I'm, I'm quite excited. I just don't know how potatoes are gonna go again because sometimes they're just a bumper harvest. I don't think the last harvest was as bad as I made it out to be because I actually have been using those potatoes. It just was bad compared to other potato harvests that I've had. The bag method does work with potatoes, but I am excited to see how these ones fare. I'm gonna have so much ginger, so there's lots of ginger beer coming up as well, which is fantastic. I've been using the ginger for cooking as well. Over here we have, let's see if I can remember it. There should be a label in there. Oh, yeah, there we go. That's right, Galangal. <laughs> it's Galangal. Now, um, I kind of just went through a stage of just buying every root vegetable that I can, so I'm not particularly familiar with how to use Galangal, but I'm sure I'll learn when you guys tell me in the comments, right? <laughs> so this one is passion fruit. Um, passion fruit on a trellis. This was originally on a um, timed 
system that had a water sensor, but I moved away from it because it was just battery powered. Like it was annoying, I guess. And I had to change the batteries, but no fruit this year. I'm hoping that we've developed enough roots. These are all on the float valve, the 3D printable pot float valve assembly. <sighs> They're not growing as fast as I'd like, but they are flowering some. I reckon next year's the year for these guys. Uh, same with Pinot Noir vines. Fruit trees haven't really been liking the rain, to be honest. And you can see the issue is I haven't been um, siphoning them out so the nutrient, it doesn't replenish. It's not the cocoa's fault. It's not because the water's going through the cocoa. It's because the nutrient doesn't get in there because the float valve doesn't engage until all the water's out. So I have to come and empty them manually, which means they're relying on me and I'm not very reliable plant daddy. Oh, just a quick side note. Um, yeah, this is the uh, 3D printable chicken feeder and you can see that she's, um, well, she's using it. How good. Okay, so I don't usually grow things in soil. Usually the things just grow themselves or die. But uh, there is one thing that I have been growing in soil that just popped up from a um, pumpkin that I just dumped in the garden when it was rotten. And uh, <laughs> I've never grown pumpkins so successfully. And I don't think I can take credit for this, but it's a gardening channel. Uh, this is my yard. Um, and <laughs> this used to be, uh, there used to be a walkway here and a walkway all the way to where I'm standing. Not usually this green, obviously. Uh, we've had so much rain. This is where I ended up filming um, the video on the pressurizable roof mounted storage the other day because I got bogged over here where I wanted to film in front of the dam. Um, and this, <laughs> look at this. So I've actually been just dropping in rhizomes of things, um, as you can see, willy-nilly, just because of how much rain we've been having. Usually they just die because there's not enough water generally in the area that I'm in. But, like, there's just pumpkins everywhere. They're, and they're... Oh, I mended all this soil ages ago, actually. I had four raised beds here that I spent tons of money on soil before the hydroponics obsession. And it's finally paying off just because of the amount of water we've got. Like, uh, it's just been so dry for years before this. So I'm actually quite chuffed with myself. May have a green thumb after all. You know, a green thumb that's got soil on it as well. Okay, so that's the pumpkin patch. Um, and we'll just head back to the studio now. Because I want to take you on a little bit of a tour around what's actually happening on the set. All right, here we go. Forgive the mess, always a work in progress. This is the Hucho's set. It's kind of like a man cave slash set. Um, here I'm testing collapsible tanks for hydro land. There's a bit of everything going on in here, right? How this works, like you might be wondering, how green? How, how plant grow no sun? Well, fake sun. Uh, this is the 800 watt Spectrum X uh, grow light. I have reviewed it. It's a great grow light. It's on full. I'm pretty sure it runs for 16 hours a day. Uh, I'll turn it on. There it is. Big light make plant green. The par doesn't need to be massive, right? So it is on full, but the par here is like specialist plant growing par. Um, but the par further away on these indoor plants and that wall, it's more like leafy greens par. So it's actually perfect. And it means I can also put stuff on the set while I'm not utilizing the set for stuff, videos and whatnot. Uh, and you can see that the plants are loving it. Like these are a Thai constellation Monstera 
and uh, whatever the other one is. Um, what's it called? Uh... Write it in the comments. Syngonium Fantasy, heaps of Epiprenum, uh Snow Queens, Pink, White Knight. Obsession is in full swing. Yeah, this is the Hooch Bucket Tower. So um, this one, I like, look at that. It's beautiful. This is a, a Thai basil. We've got a curry plant up here and some rosemary, obviously. Again, with our oregano. Thyme, this is a beautiful thyme plant. This is just on a timer drip feeding straight down. This is quite disappointing. So I actually will say this is just an experiment gone wrong. So this is the modular hydroponic system. In these systems is sphagnum moss and I think we're going to have to move away from sphagnum moss, unfortunately. I'll show you why. You can see the pH change. I'm, I got on top of this, so the pH that we're at right now is 6.3. I did get on top of this, but I think I'm too late. I'm gonna hold out because some of the plants are coming through. You can see the healthy leaves coming through now. So uh, we may, we may have saved it, um, but I am definitely not going to recommend that we use sphagnum moss in this system. We are going to use hydrogen, or rock wool, something else. I'm, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. I think these uh, middle modular sections, I'm just gonna have to put like a, a grate in the bottom of so that we can hold a media in there. But I am thinking and thinking. What else we got? Oh, the, the moss poles. Yes, yes, actually, you know what? I'm gonna release a new moss pole. We're gonna release, these are, well, they all used to be screw fittings. So you'd need to, you'd need to screw them on. It's not ideal when, let's see if I can do this without a tripod. Yes, lean the camera like so. So it's not ideal when you have a plant growing on it and you wanna cut the plant um, and remove the moss pole. I actually won't do it with this one because the plant has grown into it. These poles work so well. They are a bit of a hassle to keep on top of water-wise, but I am coming up with a solution for that as well that just holds a bottle. It's pretty simple, really. But over here, there's one that I've added one onto. Uh, so they just twist and then pull out. So there's no twisting action, like continuous twisting action. They just, you know, slide in like so and lock into place. They're just a better version of that first version of moss pole. And I'm, I'm really happy with how that design, uh, probably would have been easier just to show you like this, uh, with how that design has evolved. So bayonet slides into place, locks into place, and there's no twisting action. And the new design that is like less filament hungry, it's just fantastic takes up way less filament. It's stronger too, just because of the way that it pretty much follows the twist direction. So I will release that this video for anyone that's interested because I think it's about time it got released. There's an adapter by the way. It uh, adapts from the screw to the bayonet so you can still use the old ones and you don't have to throw them out. Um, but yeah, all right, back on the tripod you go. And that is perfect timing. You can hear that rain. It's just what's been happening around here. Wow, that light is just incredibly bright. My head probably looks like the rising sun. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Who Chose. <sighs> Lots of stuff going on around the property. Happy hydroponicking, and I'll see you next time on Who Chose. <laughs> I'm probably confusing these poor plants. They're like, I was just trying to sleep. Oh, there we go.